Well, we're still on the Inventec uh, booth here, and I'm joined by Bill Bader from INEMI. Uh, one of the reasons, of course, he's, he's joined us here is that I, uh, Inventec are a uh, uh, well-known member of INEMI. Uh, so, uh, uh, welcome, welcome, Bill. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, now, you're one of these guys who can tell us all where we're going. You can predict the future. Uh, so, <laughs> because uh, of course, INEMI produces the industry roadmap uh, for technology. Uh, so, I believe we're still in the 2011 uh, roadmap, Bill. Uh, when are we expecting the release of t the 2012 one? Um, we are in the midst of the development of the 2013 roadmap. We actually release them every two years, mm -hmm. like clockwork. Uh, we are in the midst of that. Some critical sessions on preparation of the technical chapter content are happening today at Apex. Mm -hmm. And we expect to have that roadmap, of, we will have that roadmap available four members in December of 2012, okay. and then two industry at large uh, in late Q1 2013. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it, it is the industry's most broad roadmap. I don't think I predict the future. I think it's the combination no, was, of the input from yeah. around the globe and 600 different people that participate in this roadmap development process. Right, right. Yeah. So tell us some of the key areas that um, your, your uh, organization and the members in the organization are working on uh, yeah. towards the next roadmap. Well, the other major focus of INEMI or the major deliverable of INEMI is collaborative R&D projects, words that are easy to say and hard to do effectively, getting companies that compete in industry mm -hmm. to work together on some of the most challenging technical problems that the industry faces. Uh, we have project. We have new projects uh, in medical electronics. Three mm -hmm. brand new, tough projects in reliability and test challenges and implantable, portable, and imaging devices for medical. Mm -hmm. uh, Ten to twelve companies in the supply chain, including many of the significant OEMs for medical, working together. What sort of things are you? So you say you get some challenging uh, yeah. uh, projects. Can you be more specific about? Well, let me what give you you're a couple at? of examples. One is developing component specifications for parts that go into medical products. Mm -hmm. uh, medical is, is uh, very high reliability expectations. Process control, documentation control must be extremely well managed, yet there are no specifications for the components that go into medical products. So we have a team working on development of that. We also have a team starting now on um, doing the technical assessment of compatibility of MRI and imaging devices with implantable devices. A pretty mm -hmm. critical issue for mm -hmm. mankind is if you have an implantable product, you can't get x-rays or MRIs done right. because of the magnetic field effect. So right. we have te the technical people within the supply chain working on those. Yeah, that'd be nice if you could find some sort of um, yeah. solution that would, that would eliminate yeah. these magnetic resonances so that yeah. people uh, could, could get MRI scans. Correct. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. what they're going to work on. And right. We have a long history of uh, developing preferred environmentally friendly materials mm -hmm. for the industry. We just, th this week, uh, did report out on a, a set of work done on halogen-free flame retardants for laminates and printed circuit boards, mm -hmm. and uh, have worked the transition of the industry capacity to be ready for that. So right. uh, that work is done, and then now there's a follow-through qualification and validation phase that will go on. And, and many other very high impact environmental programs. We also have some very good work in the miniaturization area, mm -hmm. working high reliability applications of copper wire bonding. Mm -hmm. Many of the, the real advanced packaging technologies have been applied in consumer electronics, mm -hmm. but they, they only need to live two or three years. Those products right. get thrown away, you get a new phone every two to three years. Yet, high reliability applications want, need materials that last 10 years. Right. So we're doing a variety of reliability studies on things like copper wire, mm -hmm. like advanced underfill materials, uh, development of N plus one generation of assembly technologies for packages, those sorts of things. Excellent. Bill, if we can just um, backtrack to the bit we're talking about environmental uh -huh. um, uh, policy. Um, how does INEMI interact with uh, people like the European Union, where they're always coming out with new environmental legislation? We interact with them, I would say, proactively. Mm -hmm. We had a conference in Europe where we did some roadmap sharing of our environmentally conscious electronics and the collaborative work that was going on on 
alternative materials. And as a function of that, we got invited to present at the European Parliament two weeks later, and we took advantage of that opportunity. We went in and shared with them the scientific work that was going on in the electronics industry mm -hmm. in, in, in hopes that the science will lead the legislation versus the reverse. That would make a change. <laughs> that, that is a uh, challenge, yes. Mm -hmm. It is difficult to drive politics, but you know, you take your best shot, you put the information out there, and you follow through. And that's right. our methodology with the EU and the EU research people. Great, right, great. Right. Final question yeah. to you is a couple of years ago, uh, INEMI moved into China. Um, yeah. And uh, how is that going? Well, it's going well. About five years ago, actually, we became international mm. in nature. And today, 50% of our membership, 50 of our 100 firms worldwide are their global headquarters are outside of North America. Right. Sixty percent of that fifty percent is in Asia. Mm -hmm. Asia is a very big place. So, but virtually all of our companies do business in China. They do manufacturing there. They do research there. So, right. we have our INEMI headquarters in Asia in Shanghai, mm -hmm. and I have a full-time resource there that takes care of the Asian market, the critical conferences, the critical membership over there. So it's become a very significant part of what right. we do. Right. So you're you're yeah. you're globalizing along with the rest of us. Uh, uh, very much so. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Bill. Uh, I know we've, you've got a busy schedule, so uh, uh, you know, thank you for giving us the update, and we'll look forward to getting the roadmap, or your members will, in December this year. Uh, anybody who wants any further information, of course, on INEMI, uh, can find that on their website, which is at inemi.org. There you go. This is Trevor Galbraith for Global S&T and Packaging. Thank you.